and gentlemen, welcome to this episode of the Economic Times Cutting Try Stories, an initiative by ET Edge. On this platform, we identify leaders and we talk about their personal and professional journeys. We discuss about their traits, their thought processes, and the qualities that make these leaders stand out in the industry across different sectors and verticals. We're all aware of the fact that these leaders are known for the spectacular work. And when we think of them, what work is something that uh, comes to our mind uh, first. However, this is a long journey and many stories uh, that go behind the making of these successful uh, people. We talk about those uh, stories on this platform. And we also try to delve into the personal sides of these leaders. Good morning, everyone. I am Dimple Bajwa, your host for this particular session. And today I have been joined by someone who had started his career in banking and turned into an entrepreneur and has over 27 years of experience uh, in entities like uh, Canara Bank and ICICI Bank. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming Anil uh, Kumar SG, founder and CEO, Samunati and Agri Value Chain Enabler. Thank you for joining us, Anil. Uh, and I'm looking forward to a great conversation today. It's, it's my privilege as well to be part of this show, uh, Dimple. I'm told this would be a free-flowing, candid conversation. I don't know this what will. it means, but I know. So, I'm happy uh, to share my journey. We will, we will go back and uh, talk to you about your school days and know more about you, you know, in your professional and, of course, your personal life. Also, we will touch upon, you know, times when you had just entered your career and we will, we will bring everything uh, to the forefront in uh, this conversation. So Anil, while you know, I was going through your career path yesterday and saw how you rose from your first job at Canada Bank or even before that, and you know, have become an entrepreneur today. I, it has become, it has been quite an interesting one. It would be great if you, if you could, you know, um, walk our viewers also through this journey of yours. Well, uh, where do I start with? You know, uh, I'm. I'm a small town boy. I am born in Kolar, brought up in Anantapur and uh, Ballari, where I did my schooling. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents uh, are from the border district of Andhra and Karnataka. Mm -hmm. All my father's side relatives are Kannada speaking. My mother's side relatives are Telugu speaking. So I can read, write uh, Telugu. So my life has always been on, on the edge mm -hmm. uh, because you know, these two cultures uh, on the border district and to add complexity to my life, I married a person who has a similar background in, in, in uh, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. She's from Palghat. Oh, wow. So she's from the border district of uh, Kerala and Karnataka. So mm -hmm. same thing on, on, on their front as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyhow, what that has brought is a nice, you know, cultural mix of the entire South India. Right. Uh, and, and that's where uh, I come from. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the background. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm last of the four siblings that my parents have. Uh, uh, I have three elder sisters, three elder bosses, as I would say. <laughs> I'm sure. And, and, and uh, the entire family is actually a debit credit family. My father <laughs> was in a bank job. Uh, uh, in our generation, I got my job first in Canada Bank. Uh -huh. Then my third sister, who saw mm -hmm. me getting a bank job, thought... Uh, if this fellow can make it, why not me? <laughs> so she got it in Indian Overseas Bank after a year and a half or so after that. Then looking at my third sister and sister, I thought if these two can make, why not me? And she got into Canada. Wonderful. Okay, okay. so that, that's what uh, is the family all about uh, in terms of the uh, background. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, dimple. And uh, just just curious here to know what are the conversations that happen, you know, at home since, you know, most of you are working with banks. What are the conversations that happen at, at home? Well, there are two types of conversations that happen. I only told about the debit credit part in, in my family. Right. Now, I'm married to a banker. Again, uh, wow. Again, so we, we both met in ICICI Bank, my mm -hmm. wife and uh, uh, me, Sita. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, her father was in Reserve Bank of India. And father's father was also in Reserve Bank of India. Wow. When I'm in in-laws place, I'm right under the supervision of a regulator. So the conversations are different. <laughs> when I'm at home, it is bankers talking. So it will be public sector, private sector, you know, how life is, targets, achievement, you know, 
the, 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 the cool life that the government bank employees had, not anymore, and, and, and how in private sector bank you need to toil. The moment mm -hmm. we shift to the in-laws place, it's all mm -hmm. about how bankers need to be regulated and how oh, yes. you have to be measured. And you know. So yes, yes. If, if there is a gentleman in me in banking, thanks to the regulator at home. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, from working uh, with banks, working for banks, and then, you know, being an entrepreneur yourself, how was this transition? So, uh, Dimple, my, my career as a banker, uh, happened rather accidentally. Really? It was never meant to be. I okay. actually wanted to be an engineer and, uh, you know, and, and get into Indian Air Force. Uh, wow. and, and hence I wrote my, you know, uh, uh, the joint entrance exam mm -hmm. and uh, got into mechanical engineering. Uh, wow. And joined uh, the Siddha Ganga Institute of Technology in Tumkur and then mm -hmm. got enrolled into uh, the NCC there. Uh, I had mm -hmm. already done the junior certificate in NCC as part of my schooling. Mm -hmm. So I joined the senior certification of uh, Airwing uh, NCC in, in my engineering college and was mm -hmm. nurturing the you know dreams of getting into Indian Air Force. Mm -hmm. But then during my plus two holidays, uh, I, I just wanted to try out the banking services recruitment board exams because my sisters were taking these exams and they were not making it. Uh, I was <laughs> and you had to prove yourself correct or i was curious saying is it so difficult let me <laughs> let, let me try it out and i i just was dabbling with their uh, you know with their material book and their exam papers question papers i was curious it's, it's it's all about quantitative ability you know general english test of reasoning right mm -hmm. it's, it's common sense and and the, perhaps the 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 engineering trait or a science background trait triggered some curiosity in me yeah uh, so I, the moment I got eligibility to write a banking services recruitment board exam, which at that point in time were, we should have been first class pass out from 10th, that's the minimum, mm -hmm. and 18 years of age. Okay. And mind you, I was in plus two holidays. I had not got my plus two results set. So I oh. applied it from that in eligibility and took the <laughs> exam during my plus two holidays, forgot about it, then uh -huh. went to, uh, uh, went to uh, Tumkur to do my mechanical engineering six mm -hmm. months later i get a telegram saying hey you have cleared the exam and and uh, one of my well wishers said why don't you just take the interview because clearing exam is one part of you know the the uh, journey if you clear the interview let us see what happens so mm -hmm. i came, took the interview in karnool in andhra pradesh and then went back to my engineering and continued that uh -huh. all of this a semester nickel you know, one, one semester went through and then another telegram came you have been you know selected to canada wow. uh -huh. and uh, then there was a dilemma the, the, mm -hmm. the dilemma was should i continue my engineering or get into an employment and it right. was not too long uh, it did not take long for me to make a decision because the family background was a little humble background we uh, we needed uh, uh, a stable uh, economic uh, uh, right. you know base Mm -hmm. as, as an engineering student, I was actually consuming 50% of my family income. So I mm -hmm. thought rather than consuming, I might as well contribute is when I decided to leave engineering and join Canara Bank. And that's how I ended up into this debit credit world. Uh, otherwise, I had, uh, you know, I had no clue that I would become a banker. So I'm an very banker. Yeah, it's very interesting. And uh, how, how, how did your family react to, you know, you... Uh, uh, getting that telegram and you know uh, getting that job how, how how was the family reaction to that so two things one the the first telegram actually created a little bit of anxiety because now there is a hope whether he would make it or not right. in the absence of the first telegram there was no hope anyhow this fellow is gone for engineering yeah. he, he will be there for another four and a half years and we have to somehow manage to send him the 650 rupees that we were sending to him every month right. that that was the priority uh-huh now that created a little bit of hope and, and especially my mother, uh, who was the anchor of the family at that point in time, was keen that, uh, you know, I make it. Uh, mm. So she was praying and, you know, promissory offerings and what have you. Uh, but when the second telegram, you know, came in is uh, when my father actually broke down. You know, he, he, he broke down because uh, uh, after... After a, a gap of few years, somebody is getting into a dhanka employment, you know, a, a, a stable employment. 
right. because all my sister started uh, going to uh, smaller jobs as soon as mm-hmm. they turned 18 mm-hmm. and then i was here getting a bank job that's what triggered what i was mentioning earlier that my third sister thought are why not me and then <laughs> my second sister that's how it is uh, i and the decision was not difficult to make uh, yeah, i'm sure decision. yes yeah but that's a very interesting journey that you've just shared uh, anil <clears throat> and you know uh, in your formative years of your career uh, did you look uh, look up to somebody as your mentor you know somebody who had a strong influence on in you right so uh, three things happened when i commenced my journey as a banker mm-hmm. first and foremost my first posting mm-hmm. was in a remote rural village okay uh, a village called uh, belagal in mm-hmm. uh, Karnool district, mm-hmm. very small village with about four thousand population, okay. uh, and and uh, you know rain-fed agriculture. Uh, you can see one of those uh, uh, one one of those uh, backward villages that we usually look. And this was in nineteen ninety one, mind you, mm-hmm. uh, some time back. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my baptism into banking happened in uh, in a in a rural branch, which I am grateful for because mm-hmm. I got to see. the 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 uh, interplay between banking and agriculture and rural customer base right and that was my first exposure you know yes. on on the power of finance mm-hmm. in its ability to transform lives you know that, that's how it started mm-hmm. the second thing that happened is the first branch manager that i got uh you know this gentleman uh you know he took me as his uh, as as his professional son i would say oh that's wonderful for some reason he took interest in mentoring me uh, which meant uh, my saturdays sundays gone because <laughs> both of us used to come and go and I, i you know that village was so small that i could not stay there so we used right. to stay in a neighboring place which was about 22 kilometers so mm-hmm. he used to daily bring me on his rajdoot early in the morning mm-hmm. and we used to work and then go back in the evening and saturdays sundays used to be you know mm-hmm. you used to be regular feature oh. uh, so i was learning from his side he was mentoring but mm-hmm. what it also meant is my life revolved around the entire you know bank and banking and got to learn a lot the only thing that he did not he did not like is whenever i left the branch when he was still in the branch so <laughs> he always used to say are we also go home no why are you going home whatever mm-hmm. is the time you no know, for him i have to come with him i have to go with him and he was my branch manager for the first two and a half years i you know he's his no more a gentleman by name b iranna passed away this year uh, but i owe a lot to uh, the work ethic that he brought in irrespective of whether you are in a government bank or a private bank or whether you are recognized not recognized uh, you know you don't do work for the sake of others you do work because it is an expression of your persona and mm-hmm. that kind of a you know a, uh, that kind of a uh, dimension he brought in to me the third important thing that also happened in this branch soon after that you know mm-hmm. it happened uh, uh, in 1993 to be precise 2nd february 1993 dimple is where you remember I, the date yeah because i stumbled into a meditation system called heartfulness accidentally okay. Uh-huh. Uh, thanks to a colleague of mine in Canara Bank, uh, uh, you know, I was dabbling with other systems. I was part of Chinmaya Mission. I did Siddha Samaj Yoga. You know, mm-hmm. I also did Vipassana uh, mm-hmm. for six months prior to that. And 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 second February, I got initiated into uh, this uh, meditation system called uh, Heartfulness, mm-hmm. which changed the way you know I, I I looked at my interplay with the external world, interplay with the fellow human beings. ability to empathize and and most importantly find a purpose you know uh, to to why am i here uh, that's very so important this shaped and all of this happened when i was when i was around 20 right right so three really good experiences when you were at that job and great learning while working i i think uh, that's the best thing that could have happened to anybody <clears throat> so you know uh, you must be having a set of you know your leadership traits and your leadership style uh, now you're an entrepreneur and you know there are people who would be looking up to you uh, for your leadership you know just to follow uh, you when it comes to leadership style what is that one trait of yours or maybe two traits that you know you would want your subordinates or your uh, or your employees uh, that you would want them to follow 
Well, uh, I am a difficult leader, so to say. I'm a difficult person to deal with because I, I don't shout at people. I, I, I don't uh, fire them. I don't boss over them. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe my leadership style is more like a Gandhi giri. I, I don't know if I can use that expression. I'm a servant mm -hmm. leader is what I, I'm best when, when I'm my own original self. Mm -hmm. To an extent, whoever it is, I... I rarely call people directly on their mobile. I just sent a, I just send a message saying, "Hey, can you please call me when convenient?" Mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that's you know that's not false humility, but that's what gives me uh, my bearing. You know, I, I feel comfortable at home with that kind. The difficulty with that is the other person does not know what my expectations are. Okay, <laughs> that's the difficulty because I have left my expectations in the hands of others. That right. whatever that they are producing, uh -huh. they are always in a dilemma whether they are producing to my expectations or not. And I am always in a dilemma whether I am pushing them enough or not. <laughs> and so there is a dilemma on both sides. No, in the house, the same thing happens. You know, if, if I am a little upset, I, I, I go silent. And that's okay. what irritates my wife the most. If you have a problem, why don't you speak out? Why don't you just tell what your problem is? But I just keep quiet, you know. Mount Brat, and I, I, Satyagra, I just keep Yes, it. and I think that's very difficult it. to take. That's true. very difficult to take. <laughs> true, true, true. It's, it's easier to let it out. Uh, very difficult for the person who's receiving it. Correct, correct. <laughs> all right, that's interesting. <clears throat> okay, so uh, we all have accomplishments, you know, that we're all proud of. And, uh, you know, you have such a vast experience and you've already uh, spoken about some of your accomplishments. But what is that one uh, maybe accomplishment that you would know uh, uh, that makes you feel like patting your back? It can be anything from your personal or your professional space. Right, right. So the, the decision to take one year sabbatical and go to Asian Institute of Management Okay. Is one important decision. Uh, mm -hmm. The reason why it is significant, and I would trade that for anything else, mm -hmm. uh, Dimple is, uh, as I said, I discontinued my engineering and joined Canara Bank, right? So right. my graduation in humanities mm -hmm. was distance mode. I took all, you know, all three years uh, uh, exams in one go, okay. in one sitting. Mm -hmm. Then my MBA in international marketing from Symbiosis Institute of you know, management is also corresponded. So okay. I was, I was a little uh, anxious that how do I build my career when I have not spent a full time in a campus? And I used to be a little unnerved, or rather, little uh, anxious when I find myself around the IIMs, the IITMs, and you know, all these, you know, bright kids around me making presentations. And well, of course, from a competence perspective, I was not inf inferior. But from a pedigree perspective, you know what I mean. You know, you, you feel a little right, right. Little uh, uh, deprived. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when the opportunity came, I took my GMAT and I, my, my wife permitted me to take one year uh, sabbatical. And mm -hmm. I'm grateful to ICICI for uh, giving me the sabbatical leave. So mm -hmm. 2004, when I was 32, is when I left uh, for Asian Institute of Management for one year. Mm -hmm. And and. That one year taught me so much, including exposing me to Dr. Muhammad Yunus's work and Banker to the Core. Mm -hmm. So when I came back, I, I joined uh, another fantastic human being, uh, Dr. Nachiket Moore in ICSA Bank. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was given the opportunity to, uh, to be part of rural microbanking and agribusiness group of ICSA Bank to set up uh, a new team called Microfinance Institution Development Team functionally reporting to someone, but more often than not directly working with Nachiket. So those two years, which led to a couple of us who are working with him being deputed to Chennai to set up IFMR Trust. That changed the you know, trajectory of, uh, of, of uh, my career, my thinking, as well as, uh, as well as the ability to connect the dots and uh, uh, think big. That's, you know, that's very interesting. Yes, and you took the chance, yes. So, you know, um, I know, I mean, today's youth, the, like five years, 10 years into their careers, they want to, uh, you know, change their profiles, they want to jump profiles, get into something else. And, uh, but some, some way I feel that, uh, you know, they're scared of taking that sabbatical. What would you want to say to that uh, youth? Should they take the chance and, you know, uh, 
take up a course, learn about something else and start over again? Or should, you just, uh, should they just stick to something that they're not enjoying? So taking sabbatical is not uh, wrong. Mm -hmm. Right? Taking a break from what you are doing is also a good idea. You know, it will give you the ability to go to the balcony and see your life. Because when you are doing day to day, you are on the dance floor. Right. right? You right. need to go to the balcony to see what's happening. You can dis, you know, disengage with the daily din. Mm -hmm. But then what I would certainly not suggest, and that is based on my experience again, is to switch careers. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason why I am strongly suggesting that Dimple is my idea to go to Manila was also to switch careers. Okay. I actually wanted to get into academics. All I right. wanted to become a professor. Mm -hmm. uh, because one of my classmates had become a professor and he was teaching in the University of Nash <laughs> and he inspired me and I thought maybe why not I become a professor. Right. But then when I went there is when I decided, when I, you know, I decided to become a professor. But when I went to Manila is when I, when I realized that the academic world is much more intense in terms of competition and there you don't have a team to fall back on. Right. Your right. competition is with intellectually evolved people and you have to compete with them with your intellectual capability. And I thought that's not for me. Uh, <laughs> well, teaching is not equal to talking. Teaching is also much beyond talking. It is. Sliver of it. Yes. So I thought uh, this is not my cup of tea. And, and that's when, as I mentioned earlier, that's when, when I was thinking is when Dr. Mohammed Yunus's work came in. Mm -hmm. Then this microfinancing, which was playing to my strength, you know, the rural banking, the, you know, my economic background and how I grew up and the ability to serve a larger population who are excluded from formal financial services and in a space where I know what it means, you know, the banking. Right, right. And, and for how I, long were you there in uh, Manila? Just one year. One year. I would actually oh. say 11 months. Okay. <laughs> uh, just 11 months. And that, that changed the trajectory of uh, my thinking. And, and right. my professors have clearly said that you will reap the benefits over a period, not immediately after graduation. So people switching careers may not find the job at the level that they would have left right. their earlier employments, which means you have to actually start from the scratch, you know, because you are in a new segment. Right. Are you ready for that? Are you open for that? Is mentally, are you comfortable for that? Difficult questions to get immediate answers. So I would not suggest people to switch, but build on how can you segue mm -hmm. into a stream where you can do your best. Mind you, I have never been in the asset side of the banking prior mm -hmm. to going to Manila. Mm -hmm. but okay. After coming back from Manila, I got into the asset side of banking. It is still a career switch from the competence perspective, but you right. are still in your viradri. You are still in your area of expertise. Same industry, same area of expertise. That's right. That's right. 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 So Anil, you're a leader and entrepreneur, and I can only imagine what your calendar looks like. You know, this brings to me, uh, this brings me to my next question, uh, that how do you maintain a work-life balance uh, and how do you manage to give time to your family? So this is where my, my heartfulness meditation helps me a great deal, uh, mm -hmm. you know, dimple. Mm -hmm. the, the small investments of time that I was fortunate to make first thing in the morning, paid a rich dividend over these 29, 30 years that I have been practicing this meditation. You know, mm -hmm. the first thing that, that, that happens in my, in my daily schedule is my morning meditation. Okay. Right? And what it does is it makes the rest of the day productive, lively, purposeful, and more efficient. Mm -hmm. and, and from a banker's perspective, I would say it, it pays me rich dividends and compounds that uh, in terms of the payback. Right. Uh, so the time that, that, that usually takes to solve issues, problems, you know, go to the crux of what are we discussing, you know, all of that, you know, happens naturally, easily, over a period, of course, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so as, as my, you know, my uh, global guide of uh, heartfulness, uh, you know, uh, Daji says, Meditation mm -hmm. is just not for uh, uh, spiritual purposes. It's not for moksha. Meditation makes you more efficient. You know, as, as I said, uh, yoga, karmasha, kaushalam. You know, the, the practice of yoga mm -hmm. brings efficiency in your vocation. And in my case, my vocation is 
how can I serve as many farmers as possible, millions of them in the shortest possible time and how can I be efficient and, and uh, the energy comes, comes, comes from that. The other thing that also uh, helps a great deal is uh, uh, being aware of, you know, uh, aware of uh, why Samunati exists, why, you know, I exist. Uh, the reason why Samunati exists is to make markets work for smallholder farmers. Mm -hmm. uh, and why markets should work for smallholder farmers, right? Uh, because the markets have been working off the farmer. This is the time where we have to make the markets pay uh, to the farmer, you know, right. to be beneficial yeah. to the farmer. That mm -hmm. makes this journey, Samunati, a purpose-driven one than an employment. Mm -hmm. This is not a business, you know, this is not an employment, this is not an enterprise. Now, this yes. is a purpose, this is a mission, you know, this is an opportunity to serve. When you do that, then uh, there is no work-life balance. You know, this is life, this is work, both happen together. And as they say, you know, the, the, the inner journey, the outer journey are like two wings of a bird. Uh, mm -hmm. The stronger the wings, uh, the higher you soar. Uh, so every entrepreneur, I would strongly suggest, uh, should take up some, some inner anchor, some inner journey. You know, in mm -hmm. my case, it was heartfulness, you know, and, and I have been a uh, significant beneficiary of that. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, others may have something else. May they may try it out, uh, try out heartfulness. I volunteer for several programs. Right? You know, I, I am a, a trainer and also take sessions for fellow corporates, fellow entrepreneurs. We do uh, village connect programs where we work with farmers in teaching them, you know, meditation and how can they do. It. Uh, that's interesting. So that's a good initiative, I think, that you're taking up. True. Uh, because a lot is happening in, in a farmer's life as well. Right, right, right. No, no, no. I think that's very uh, thoughtful of you to do that. All right. So my last question, <clears throat> very interesting. Uh, you know, traveling is something that we've missed for the past two and a half years. Although, you know, things have eased down a little, but now again, there's another strain of uh, uh, the virus that has come up. Um, have you missed traveling in these two years? And uh, what place is what place do you have on top of your bucket list to travel that you would want to tick off as soon as you know uh, restrictions ease down and as soon as we're all uh, vaccinated maybe right uh, I, I would be lying if I say I did not miss my travel because I'm, I'm a you know a man from the trenches you know I belong to rural India I belong to villages I belong to the you know farming and farmers. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I do miss a lot in terms of not being in the field, mm -hmm. uh, not being with the farmers, not being on the ground. Right. Uh, but however, we have been traveling, you know, uh, in the villages, in and around, because we can take our own transportation and go. Right. To an extent where uh, traveling has not been uh, beyond the, the, the second lockdown, which was very stringent for yes. right reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to the second lockdown, and after the you know second lockdown, we have been traveling. But the one region that I would certainly want to go, and at the earliest, is Northeast. Uh, we have just started our operations in Northeast. It inspires me, you know, so much that uh, as a pristine uh, agroclimatic zone, right. Northeast is like like a gold mine. It is uh, the the amount of interventions and. Uh, energy that, that you can bring into farming and mm -hmm. agri value chains in northeast is tremendous you know my my, my, my uh, you know uh, upper chamber is brimming with ideas on what all can be done i can imagine i can only imagine that yes <laughs> uh, <laughs> turmeric and, and pineapples and you know what, what have you there are so many so many uh, you know specific value chains that you can work uh, right. People there are uh, very industrious. You know, we have four people from there recruited into Samunati, part of our you know team and journey. Uh, mm -hmm. They are there. Uh, I'm I'm raring to go, raring to go to Northeast. That's nice, and uh, I hope that happens soon. God willing. And, yeah. Right. All right, uh, Anil, it was a great conversation with you, very candid, and thank you for bringing out that personal side of yours in front of our viewers, in front of us, and there is so much to take away from this conversation with you today. Thank you once again for joining. No, thank you. Thank
thank you for this opportunity dimple and if if this can give some ideas to fellow entrepreneurs uh, i think uh, our time uh, paid no. dividends so the banker in <laughs> <laughs> right I, i'm sure it will it will and uh, before i sign off i would like to welcome mr aditya agarwal head large enterprises lenovo to this conversation welcome aditya hi dimple hi so i will leave the Anil. conversation uh, to anil and you aditya but uh, before that i have one last question for both of you here what are the challenges faced by the industry in 2021 is there any innovation that we see and how do we get prepared for the upcoming years sure uh, <laughs> who will go first uh, aditya go ahead, anil. your name is your first <laughs> <laughs> so uh, well uh, 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 agriculture starts with kharif and uh, goes in goes into rabi and comes back to kharif you know that that that's the uh, circle of life uh, for agriculture but the way the you know year is about to end given given the cop 26 that happened a, you know a, 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 you know couple of weeks ago then the you know climatic events that we are going through i'm i'm in chennai now uh our place is still cut off uh in terms of uh, being inundated under water uh I, i think it is important to bring in the climate smart dimension in agriculture and uh, technology needs to and can play a significant role in in furthering agriculture from a climate smart dimension without impinging on the income levels and the and the sustainability of farming uh so if there is a way where uh, we all come together and focus on on version x.0 whatever is that x of agriculture with focus on climate smart dimension with technology as an enabler and with farmer as the beneficiary uh that that would be the best thing to happen simple right right aditya your views on this so uh, you know interesting to hear anil's uh, views because i was thinking that you know what uh, anil is involved in is the oldest uh, profession uh, of the world which is agriculture you know to connecting that with the most recent of technology and whatever innovation that we have to offer right i'll i'll speak more from uh, you know what we see around is that with uh, this whole uh, pandemic people working from home digital devices increasing we see uh, uh, some good trends technology is moving even faster innovation is happening at a larger scale with better end uses cases in mind but at the same time we see some challenges you know which is uh, uh, productivity we see security as a big uh, big threat uh, and we see uh, that uh, you know economics also coming in people asking for uh, you know uh, trying to preserve capital by saying that hey uh will not go for capex will go for opex so we see these trends that uh, uh security is going to be very very important uh, people are asking for more at lesser uh, faster better at lesser that is what the industry is also teaching them right because to- today you see uh, innovation in this whole area where uh, you know something that was that you thought was good people are surpassing that and you didn't even know that you needed something like that so it's uh, uh you know best of times and worst of times in that way and uh, uh you know the next one year is not uh, when we talk about uh, one year later i think the situation will be a bit more just yesterday you know i was reading about uh, you know robots which, which can replicate now right so uh, you know next one year i don't know what else uh, is there in store right right um, all right uh, aditya i'm going to leave the conversation to you now uh you can take it forward from here thank you dimple thank you anil thank you dimple anil it was uh, you know really uh, great to hear you right i and uh, I, i checked out your heartfulness meditation while uh, you were speaking right oh, because nice. I, i did vipassana some 20 years ago i was forced to do vipassana 20 years ago you can imagine how i would have felt at that time but it was a curriculum requirement from the institute that if you have to do this you have to do vipassana right so uh, yes been on and off but uh, i thought i'll uh, check that out because you know as you said you know it doesn't just it's not just for spirituality right it i have found that it uh, pays dividends when you are talking to people being focused on them rather than figuring out you know what's going to happen next or hey this thing didn't work that thing didn't work right plus i'm sure there'll be other benefits nowadays no i'm not a great uh, practitioner right i i try to practice 
30 to 40 percent of the days that's after putting alarms but uh, you know uh, you know great and uh, there's so much to talk right the the uh, what you're doing in agri uh, uh, sector is uh, really amazing so i, I want, want to know what what are you because i when i went through your uh, site everything you're doing multiple things for the farmers right uh, from not just in not just financial right you're talking about creating market you're talking about all of that and while being the best place to work in right for overall for women so what are you exactly doing uh, in samunati great 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 so uh, aditya before we get into answering this question i'm glad you went to the heartfulness uh, website the, the beauty is this system is designed for people like you and me you know who are professionals pressed for time and uh, need an anchor uh, mm -hmm. and and you know it is available completely free of cost so yeah i saw that yeah uh, and, and online you can actually like you can ask for a meditation with a trainer uh, yes. 24 by 7 whichever part of the globe you are like how yeah. you okay ola and uber no you can request yeah. for a trainer that also is free of cost no? where can you get such an opportunity where and i saw that uh, you know they have short courses that if you are if you are doing this then this is the right yeah. meditation for you so quite yeah. uh, relevant for our times too <laughs> So coming back to uh, Samunnati, uh, you know, it, it is uh, the word Samunnati is collective growth, collective prosperity, collective elevation. And the reason why we exist is to make markets work for smallholder farmers. And who are these smallholder farmers? The farmers who either have a very fragmented land as, as their asset or working on a small piece of land. And 80% of our farmers are smallholder farmers. And again, in that approximately 80% of them are, uh, are not having their own land. They do lease and tenant farming okay. and so on and okay. so forth. So th there is a large number of smallholder farmers, right? Now, one end of the spectrum is the you know fragmented land holding smallholder farmers. Now, the other end of the spectrum is who are the players who are interested in this smallholder part? Okay. They are, you know, input companies, you know, uh, the uh, crop protection chemical companies, which are part of input, then the output companies, then the logistic companies, then you have uh, uh, other services companies, banks, and, you know, other financial institutions. All of them are interested in this smallholder part. Ah, but difficult to read. The, the challenge is, Everybody is interested in the farmer, but they are interested in the farmer within a narrow scope of what they are doing. They want, yeah, yeah. The, the, the you know, input company would want to engage with the farmer from an input dimension. Yes. And within input company, you have seeds, fertilizers, chemicals. Within seeds, you have hybrid, native, genetically modified, and organic. You, you see the number of fragmentation, and everybody wants to reach the farmer. Output company would want to reach the farmer, but only after harvesting. I have nothing to do with your pre harvest. <laughs> I yeah. don't know which seed you use. I don't know which you know input you use, but I will come after the harvest. Right. Banks and financial institutions want to give a loan or give a you know product or sell an insurance, but I have nothing to do with your input or output or your cultivation or your harvest. You know, I yes, my anything. loan is what matters in the repayment of that loan. <laughs> now imagine this fragmented market. Mm -hmm. Looking at engaging with a person who has a fragmented land holding. Mm. Right? These are two different worlds. What yeah. Samanthi is looking at, and, and this is where we are today. Though we started our journey as a lending institution, very mm -hmm. soon we realized that finance is important but not sufficient. Mm -hmm. You have okay. to do much more. And in agriculture, you have to be a partner. You have to be an internal player in the value chain. Mm -hmm. So that realization led us to look at engaging the smallholder farmer through their collectives. Mm, a okay. collective could be a cooperative or a farmer producer organization or an agri enterprise which works with a set of dedicated farmers it could be a village level entrepreneur who can take care of about 300 to 500 farmers these are all collectives can you engage with this collective and build a digital wrapper around them okay as samunnati with an objective to be window to the world for the farmer where you don't need to engage with multiple players we will engage on your behalf with the multiple players and then tell these multiple players that you can go through me to access your farmer without having to do other things. Okay. You can continue to be focused on your input or continue to be focused on your output or continue to be focused on giving a loan. You don't need to do other things. 
and for I'll all that of that you can continue to focus on your cultivation i will be that digital rapper i will be your ah. conduit and that's yep. what samunati is and then you are you know from the technology world and that is where most of our agri technology interventions are coming and shaping wow wow so i mean two totally different worlds right and then you'll have people who are really working with the farmers at the field level and uh, at the tech level you have those guys who are trying to solve this tech it it, it is too interesting what you are doing right uh, it, it 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 is and and the domain expertise is an important dimension we have to make all of this finally work as yep. as, as a symphony you know we we are like zubin mehta make all <laughs> players you know orchestrate and be in symphony be in resonance yep yep so there's a lot, lot of technology part also and you know we would like to you know understand uh, i won't take much of your time but would like to understand you know what are what are you doing in technology is there any way we can partner with you because we uh, bring a host of uh, you know solutions you know uh, ms really just uh, in a couple of lines we travels from uh, a, a mobile phone which is motorola mobile phone to pc to tablet to server to storage to software managed services we look at financing right so financing is uh, you know that's your uh, you know core competency but we are looking at people who want it assets as service rather than buy assets so i'm sure we can do something together maybe i'll reach out to you later you know uh, if you can connect us but we will love to partner with you because uh, and it, it was so proud just going through your uh, website you know how you are uh, you know doing uh, you know good stuff for the farmers we'll love to know more and engage with you later no th- th- thank you for the kind words aditya but there is a lot to do our journey has yeah. just begun and yes. partnerships with uh, well intentioned and uh, uh, able entities like yourselves uh, will only further our journey so would be more than happy to explore it is that. will be our pleasure thank you thank you, you so much you have a nice day you too bye 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 thank you thank you anil thank you aditya and uh, really nice conversation again with me and with aditya of course and uh, seriously we're all uh, proud of what you're doing anil there no uh, i would say it, it is an opportunity dimple uh, uh, i am grateful grateful to this opportunity i must say i am living my dream uh, and and uh, i don't know what i have done in my previous life lives to deserve this uh, but i am grateful grateful to him and uh, grateful to the entire ecosystem and wonderful people who have come my way in advising me at 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 regular intervals in nudging me in the regular paths whether it is professional whether it is personal whether it is spiritual you know i'm i'm grateful to all of them and and the the person that i'm most grateful to is my my spiritual guide uh, uh, daji uh, his uh, uh, you know his attention and uh, uh, guidance uh, is something that inspires me to just move yes i am sure and uh, thank you once again anand for joining in this cutting chai story session Okay. and we look forward to hosting you sometime again in the future on our platform thank you have a good day